Welcome back to Brashonomics. I am Ben Brashen. And, you know, when you start thinking about investments and opportunities, certainly, as we talked about in the monologue, real estate does become one of those topics that might jump into your mind. And there's so many different ways to invest in real estate that, uh, well, we try to cover them all. But right now, we're going to talk with Jason Howdeshell, buyer's agent with Heaton Denard Real Estate, who works with investors to assist them in purchasing bank-owned properties, and really other types of uh, investments. First of all, welcome, Jason. How are you? I'm doing well. Good. I'm, I'm glad you're doing well. <laughs> I'm glad you're here because it sounds like you guys are pretty busy right now. Kind of that, that pop of an excitement and sexiness of real estate seems to be coming back a little bit. I think a lot of the investors see that uh, the market's pretty much stabilized, so it's a pretty – it's a good investment now to be uh, buying flip properties and buying hold. And so do you guys do a lot with, I mean, is it that flip mentality or the buy and hold or where do you see yourself for the most part? The, the flip's always been big the last couple of years. Cause people like to get in and get out, get their money. And, uh, but the buy and hold's been pretty hot the last couple, couple of months. Is there, is there a reason to choose one over another? Uh, a lot of investors like also having that monthly income from the rentals and then, you know, building the capital with, uh, the flip property is always great too. So there's this kind of element of just getting the money, buying the real estate and getting them, getting more money. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. About nine out of 10 investors like that the most. They, they love flipping the properties. It's because it's on HGTV. <laughs> yep. It is. So, I mean, you can watch it and then you know exactly how to do it because you watched a TV <laughs> show once. Yeah. Uh, Jason, so let's talk a little about, you know, a lot of the houses people are buying are bank owned. We've heard here that the bank owned inventory is dwindling along with the rest of the inventory in Seattle. Tell us a little bit about the bank on inventory from your point of view. Yeah, I'd say last year I could take literally 10 listings and show to one buyer. And now it's more like 10 buyers for one listing. So it is it is a lot lower. So, um, yeah. so, so what are people supposed to do? I mean, you talk about bank owned inventory, right? So the, the properties have been foreclosed on and now like what Bank of America owns them or Wells Fargo or some of these other big banks that love stealing from people and then foreclosing on their houses once that's a whole other story. But, uh, you know, what what happens then? What are people supposed to go looking for in a bank-owned inventory? I mean, that seems to be something people go for. Well, if you, in my opinion, if you're buying a bank-owned property, it really has to be a great deal because it's a little bit more involvement buying it and you're taking a little bit more risk. Um I mean, especially with you have to assume all the charges and assessments on a property. So if there's a sewer capacity charge, you have to take that on. So we're a normal traditional listing that gets prepaid. Also, um, you know, other things you got to be aware of is, uh, you know, septic and sewer systems. I mean, the bank's not going to pay to repair any of those things. So that's another thing you have to could take on if the septic's bad and then you got to buy with the bad septic. So, I mean, that could be 25 grand. So. so how do you define a good deal? I mean, is this just on the front end? You need to make sure that your pricing is correct. Is that, is that really what you're talking about? Yep. Yeah, I mean, if you're, you know, you take like uh, North Seattle, for instance. Uh, I mean, if you're buying in the Greenwood, Green Lake area, most people know, you know, price per square foot, what you're buying, it's going to be a deal or not. So, you know, if you're buying something at 250000 in there, I mean, that's where you want to be. If something's worth four hundred, so. So it's really on that initial price. Because you talk about all the stuff that can go wrong, overfilled septic, which you might smell before <laughs> before you have to buy the property, uh, or, or these different issues. Now, essentially what I think I you're saying is you better make sure that you're, you've accounted for all these potential issues, and that really is where the purchase price is going to come into play. Is that right? Yep. Well, is, it, is that the deal you're talking about? Yeah, especially like you take even Kirkland, for instance. I mean, people see if something's under $250,000 in Kirkland, it's probably a deal. You know, so you'll see, I mean, there was one that came up this weekend for 225000 and there was, I mean, like over 20 offers on that house. So, I mean, that's definitely something you have to deal with. I would imagine it. Yeah, I mean, it, that would make <laughs> sense. That seems pretty inexpensive. Yep. But it, with a good deal comes a lot of competition, doesn't it? Yep. So how do you make sure it's still a good investment? Uh, I mean, definitely doing comparables. I mean, if you're... You know, a three bedroom, two bath, fifteen hundred square foot house in Kirkland, and you can get it for two hundred twenty five, and then comparables come in, it shows it's worth three fifty. I mean, that's a deal. You got to do whatever it takes to get. So, except for pay three twenty six. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are some other of these big factors that make a good investment? 
Um, I mean, definitely the thing, the biggest ones I guess I like is buying houses that really don't need that much fix up for a great deal. So, I mean, if you can buy, you know, the windows and the roof and the exterior is not bad and you can do a light fix up on the inside. I mean, that, those are my favorite ones to get because you can just get in and out of those as an investment really quick, which most investors like where if you're buying an older hundred year old Seattle house that has old wiring and old furnace, I mean, that, that's like a four or five month rehab. So that's kind of what I look for. So that it's shorter term in some place. And, and we're really talking about flips and, and being able to yep. kind of get in and out. We're here with Jason Howdeshell with uh, Heat and Denard Real Estate. Jason, uh, so you, you go out, you're looking for a flip. Let's we'll call it a flip as opposed to the proverbial real estate investment here so people can you know follow. But you call this flip. You're going out, you're looking for one. What's different about that purchase process? Because you see it on maybe TV or you have a friend that's done it once and it sounds like – Man, what a great idea! Because you always hear about the ones people did really well on. Uh, I, you know, if I have a first-time investor, usually I try to get them into an easier flip project instead of you know a hundred thousand dollar plus remodel, something that's quicker and easier. Um, you know, the timeline's faster, something that's going to be less fix up, so they can see the the process. And uh, you know, hopefully, if it's a newer house, it'll need less things, so they, uh, you know, you don't run into huge problems. I mean. So, so really understanding the property, the piece of mm-hmm. property, it seems like a, that initial piece of that process. Yes. Yeah. And what about the what? Do, what do you think you have to really watch out for? Uh well, the biggest thing, is, especially with bank-owned properties, the listing agents are going to, for the most part, they'll say they don't know anything about the house, and it's going to be what they, you know, there's also what's called the Form 17 on the MLS, so that's a disclosure saying what's wrong with the property. So if you live there, you have to fill that out. But the bank's saying, hey, you know, we know nothing about this. You have to figure everything out that's wrong with it. So you really have to have uh, a good inspector go in and look at the property. You need to usually camera the sewer or uh, inspect the septic system because, I mean, that could be huge. A broken sewer line could be 15000 bucks. A bad septic system could be twenty five. And if the septic's bad, you might have to hook the sewer. That could be 35000 I mean, you're just trying to buy a house. Next thing you know, you're upside down thirty five grand. And this isn't so, even the stuff that looks good. Or, yeah. I mean, this is just the you haven't even, maintenance Yeah, stuff. you haven't even touched the furnace or the wiring or the, the, the windows, the roof, any of that. So... Just making sure that uh, you can get the stuff out that needs to be, really. Mm-hmm. I mean, it sounds like that's what a lot of this is, is, is old sewer. Yeah. <laughs> that, is not, that is not the sexy real estate uh, nope. investing we were talking about earlier there, Jason. Nope. Yeah. So what else do people have to watch out for other than maybe the, the bank not having to disclose what's wrong with the house? or Because technically, I guess they wouldn't know. Maybe they've never been there. Well, and the other thing is you're going to have to take on all charges and assessments, too. So if there's a sewer capacity charge, I mean, that could be 10000 bucks. That's another thing that you have to take on. So the bank is not going to pay those. So where a traditional sale, it's usually the the seller pays any charges and assessments when you close. So what does that all mean? I mean, what what all charges and assessments? What 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 could those be? Usually, like in King County, usually it's something like a sewer capacity charge. And that, you, got, you, got, you talk a lot about sewer for a guy who does real estate it's, investment. It's tra- you can you just come lot. out of some bad yeah. sewer deals, buddy. <laughs> well, you know, it's it's something that. People don't realize, and all of a sudden you go to sell it, and then the listing or you know the buying agent at the back end goes, and they're like, "Oh yeah, you know, Rotor Rooter just said this can be fifteen thousand to fix that," and then you're looking to make twenty thousand on that house. Now that becomes kind of a tight deal, so you really got to get in and do as much due diligence on it as you can. How can you do that on your own? I mean, how, how does somebody go? You know, you can call like a Beacon Plumbing or whatnot. They go mm-hmm. in, you're going to scope the scope the old uh, sewer line, which apparently that's where this conversation has gone, <laughs> into the sewer lines. Uh, but, you know, you scope that line, and now you found out it's a mess. The bank's not going to pay for it. So what, you just have to chop it down in the price and, and hope you can cover it in the money you, you plan on investing? You you can tr- you can try. I mean, you get most like, for instance, uh, Fannie Mae usually give you a 10-day inspection period. So in that inspection period time, you have to get in there and really look at it and know what you're buying. You know, we, we usually do home inspections on everything, have the specters, a second set of eyes, which is always nice. We have the contractors go through. They always have their opinions on things they've seen and need repairs. And then, uh, you know, I always get, like you say, you know, the sewer and the septics. I didn't inspected. say it. You did. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then, uh, you know, know what you're getting, what know what needs to be fixed. So you can a lot of times go back to the bank and say, hey, you know, the septic, the drainage field's bad. I mean, that could be 20 grand and say, uh, you know, we need to help us out on the price. And, you know, you didn't disclose that. We didn't know that. So, and 
go from there. It's a, it's a good leverage tool, too. So it sounds to me like what you're saying in a nutshell here is you start, you got to get the good price to start with. Mm -hmm. But then there's going to be all these factors that continue to make it a good deal that have to do with the condition of the home that could also make it a really bad deal if you don't appropriately go through the right avenues of, you know, well, <laughs> getting the septic checked. Yeah. Or and whatnot. So what what else is there a benefit then in having an agent kind of help you through this process or an inspector? Do you need a whole team? Uh, I I that's how we buy all our deals. So um, who's involved in the team? Uh, well, me as a buying agent. We also have a project manager who meets us at the property. Uh, he manages all of our projects. Uh, I have a home inspector and a, a guy from Sewer Detectives that I use. So um, and then uh, we also have. Uh, uh, James Dainard, he also looks at the house too because he works with on the buying and the selling. So, and then we pretty much package a deal together, see what the repairs are going to be, make sure it's a good deal, and it's uh, you know especially for using private financing or using cash. So, and then figure out the construction budget. So, if we're buying something for a hundred grand, you know it needs fifty thousand to fix up, and we can sell it for two nineteen. That's a pretty good deal. So, it's pretty much where we're. So it sounds like, I mean, there's a lot of people trying to help you make that yep. decision. Again, we're here with uh, Jason, Jason Howdershell, Heaton Daynard, real estate. And, uh, you know, we just have a couple minutes left before we have to go to break. But what, what are some of the best deals you've seen out there recently that people could get excited about? Uh, some of my favorite ones are the HUD homes. I mean, they, they, will, uh, they have these kind of wacky appraisals. So they'll come through and they won't count the the basement square footage so they'll list it as a three bedroom one bath thousand square feet where it's a two thousand plus square foot house and they're literally a hundred thousand dollars off price but in that first 30 days it's owner occupant only so if you can snag something like that for one of your owner occupant buyers it's fantastic so those have been some of the best deals i've seen um but and then fannie mae and freddie mac definitely some more ones i've bought a lot of deals from that i like and in fact fannie mae usually has a 15-day first look period, but there's also Fannie Mae properties out there that don't have a first look period that are fantastic deals. So, But you need to have a good buying agent who knows how to find those. Yeah, how does somebody track those? Uh, there, you, there's just a certain – that's a secret of the business. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, uh, there's a certain – I mean, there's search tools, right? Oh, yeah. To find this yeah. stuff out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the MLS has that. Or you can find a real estate agent who has access yeah. to these things. Well, we, we have our own special bank track system that uh, James actually designed, and that's what we use full time. Cool. So that helps us pick out the, the nice properties in the best areas with the best spread. So The best spread. It's all <laughs> about the spread, isn't it? That and making sure your sewer line ain't broken. Uh, Jason, thanks so much for joining us again. Jason, Jason Howdeshell with Heaton Daynard. Real estate. When we come back, it's Mortgage Monday here, guys. Brian Leopold is going to join us. We're going to talk about some ways you can finance some of those real estate investment properties. We'll be right back. <laughs> 